Good morning. How are y'all? Am I good? Yeah? Cool. Um, I know you guys are here for a smoked pig, but um, just hang out for a few more minutes. We're going to read God's Word together and talk about it. Is that cool? Um, so if you have a Bible with you, or like Trey was saying, got it on your phone or something like that, pull it up. We're going to open up to uh, Galatians chapter 6 this morning. Um, there are some Bibles under, under chairs as well if you want to find one. or Like I said, pull it up on your phone. Open up your physical Bible. Um, me and Scott Moore go back and forth about this. Like, he's an iPad guy, man, and I'm just like, paper never, like, shuts off. It's all good. It's right here. Um, we got it, and it works. So uh, if you've got a physical Bible, open it up with me. Galatians chapter 6, we're going to read verses 1 through 10 together, and um, I'm going to pray over us, and we're going to dive right in. So let's read together. Um, it is up on the screen, too, if you want to follow along. Galatians 6, 1 through 10. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else, for each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Let's pray. God, I pray that these words, your words, written by your Apostle Paul here in Galatians, would uh, just really settle into our hearts and our minds today. I pray this would not just be um, another 20-30 minutes where we just sit and, and listen to a sermon and nod our heads and Go to lunch. I pray that your spirit would wield this sword in our lives and in our midst right here as we listen together to what your word says to us and that we would live and move and act, respond accordingly as your church doing life together. God, let us do that. Let us be faithful to you and listen to you, God. This is your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, as we've been going through this series, Life Together, um, the last four weeks, it has been, for us as a, as a preaching team, I'm just, I don't know, kind of giving you a little insight into the process of us thinking about these things and how we um, want to help lead and teach y'all as a church. Um, a lot of times after Easter, this is just kind of I don't know, church culture is what happens, but a lot of times after Easter, you're, you're, you're sort of told by the experts, you know, of church, um, that you got to do like a family series, right, right after Easter. For some reason, it's like you do Easter, and then people might come back from Easter, and so you want to kind of captivate them and talk about families and stuff like that. And that's, you know, it's good generally, and we've done that, but as we were kind of thinking about this and, and, and talking about it as a preaching team, we were like, man, the, the reality is family, for one thing, just looks different for everybody, right? Family's just very, it's, it's all over the map. I mean, there are some in here in one context of family and there's others in here in a completely different context and season of life and young and old and married and not married and have kids or don't have kids or whatever. And um, so we kind of settled on this idea of we're, we're talking about family, but really more so the family of God, the church family and how it looks for us together, wherever you're at and whatever your context looks like to do life together. Us doing life together. Guys, the New Testament um, is written to Christians who are doing life together. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about this in the book of Acts, chapter 2, where we see the church begin. And there's these Christians from all over the world who show up in Jerusalem from different countries and different regions who speak different languages, who then follow Jesus on this day that Peter preaches this sermon. And then all of a sudden, they're a new family. Right? They're like this new community, this new culture of Christianity. They have to figure out how in the world do we do life together? How in the world do we then like, 
love each other and serve each other and help each other and do the things that Jesus taught us to do. He just died. He just came back to life and ascended back to heaven. And now we're here on earth to follow him in this, right? And to be this new family and to do this life together. So Paul and Peter and John and James and all these guys who wrote the New Testament, they're helping us with that. They want to help us understand what that looks like. And so Paul, as he's writing Galatians, um, Galatians is one of his more simple books, just very straightforward. Here's the, here's the theme of Galatians. It is faith in Jesus Christ, right? And how, do, how are we saved? What does it mean to be righteous, to be right with God? Faith in Jesus. And then what does that look like? We walk by the Holy Spirit. We, we keep in step, as he says in 525. We keep in step with the Spirit. We walk that out. This is the book where we have the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, right? He, he's showing us this. We have faith in Jesus. We're full of his Holy Spirit, and then we live that out. And now he gets to this last little bit here, and he's just kind of bringing us in. He's kind of helping us to kind of lean in. He's going, okay, brothers and sisters, church, now listen, this is what you should be doing with one another daily, all the time. This is how it should look. This is how you live this faith out and walk in step with the Spirit. If you are full of God's Spirit, as you are, if you have faith in Jesus, this is what that should look like in this context as we do life together. And the first thing he says is, brothers, if someone is caught in sin... You who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourself or you also may be tempted. So the first kind of context of this is he's just going, look, there are some among you who just feel like you're trapped in sin. The word he uses really is the word caught. It's the word trapped. It's like uh, being ensnared in a net or in a trap, or even they would use this word for like being kidnapped, right? Kind of being like snatched up and carried away, right? Like sometimes in life, and let's be honest, like, to be clear, sin is my fault. My sin is my fault. That is true. And yet sometimes, man, I just because of the nature of it or just the season of life I may be in or whatever it, it's kind of looking like in my own personal life or in your life, there are times when we just maybe feel like we're a little bit more stuck than other times in that sin. Or maybe it's something that you've just wrestled with for years and you became a Christian in the midst of that and you never really learned to kind of get rid of that in your life. And Paul's just saying, look, there are some among you who that may be true of. Now, if you are spiritual, and then what he's, again, what is he saying? If you are full of the Holy Spirit, if you are a Christian person having faith in Jesus and the Spirit of God lives in you, it is your job to see that reality in the midst of this church family and to restore each other. That word, I love the word restore there. It's actually the word that means to kind of help somebody get back to being fully functional. That's what it means, like to fix, help them fix what's going on there. Right? So again, the idea is like, man, if, if I'm caught in sin, if I'm walking in sin, and there's just, man, I'm struggling through and I can't really figure out how to get out of it, that I need a brother or sister, I need my church family to help me along with that through counseling, through prayer, through encouragement, through accountability, right? Through holding me fast in my faith and in following Jesus and in walking in the Spirit, right? We do that together and we restore each other to our proper place within the family. Because let's just be honest, sometimes, and, and many of us in this room, we can attest to this, when you're caught in sin of some sort, doesn't it feel like you're just useless sometimes? Don't you just you ever gotten there where you just feel like, man, I can't, I, I can't really be a minister of the gospel because I'm wrestling with this or that, or I'm failing here. And, and Paul understands this. And he's going, man, that should not be the way any of us do life. As Christians, as the family of God, it is our job to see that in one another and to have permission. Listen, is there anybody in your life that has permission to ask you about this? That is a good question. And I think if we're living New Testament Christianity life together, that, that should, the answer to that question should be, yes, there are people in my life that have permission from me to ask, how are you doing are you wrestling with some particular thing? Hey, I know that this, this sin has been something kind of off and on in your life. How are you doing with that? Can I help you with that? Can we pray together with that? Can I hold you accountable to that? Can I ask you about that? Do, are there people in this room or in a growth group with you or that you do ministry with? Are there people who can ask you those questions? And on the flip side, are there people that you have gained permission because of your love for them to ask those questions too? Are, are there people that you love in this family, that you have earned the permission and the place in that. Listen, I'm not saying do this if you haven't earned it by your love and your compassion for them. He says do this gently, right? Restore them gently. So we have to be gentle. We've got to love one another. We have to have compassion. We're not judging each other. But have we earned that relational right to ask our brothers and sisters that question? How you doing? Can I, can I help you? Can I help restore you to the place where you are who Christ has called you 
to be. And he just says, look, be careful while you do that unless you also are tempted. So just understand, know yourself, right? What your temptations are, what your struggles are as well. And don't fall into the same temptations. It, it is never good and it's never healthy when we're trying to help each other kind of walk out of sin. And yet we're kind of being trapped in sin ourselves, right? And then he says this, he says, carry one another's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he's something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. So he says, carry each other's burdens. Bear one another's burdens. The word burden is just the the word weight. I wonder how much weight some of us have walked in here this morning with. Man, I'll be honest. I... A lot of you guys like me, you've done church for a long time, right? You've been, you, you've done this thing for a long time. You've been in church since you were little and kind of grew up in this. And you know how to play that game, right? You know how to do that dance. You know how to put on the Christian mask, clothes, and go to church on Sunday morning, right? We all know how to do that. And let's be real, y'all. Human beings, and Christians are no exception to this, are professional liars, professional fakers. You can lie to me and I can lie to you. And guys, we're not going to know the difference for the most part. And we can walk into this place and we can sit in our seats and we can hang out in the atrium and we can go eat smoked pork in a little bit and we can be happy and put on our smiles. And at the same time, no, there is a weight in our lives, a burden that we're bearing. This isn't talking about sin, this part. It's just talking about struggles and pain and anxiety and depression and fear and doubt and and family issues and work problems and stuff that we're walking through and disappointments and heartache that we're bearing, that we're wearing every single day and that we're letting nobody in on, that we're not letting anybody know about. And and here's the thing that I think we don't understand and we we need to kind of get into our minds and our hearts this morning is simply this, because he says, bear each other's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. So what does that mean? If we can't bear each other's burdens, we can't fulfill the law of Christ. And so you and I, listen, as we refuse to share our burdens with each other, we are sinning against each other. Because we are not allowing each other to fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is love one another. That's the law of Jesus. We can't do, because listen, you can't be fully loved if you're not fully known. We can't love you where you're at if we don't know where you're at. We can't do it. And we are hindering one another from fulfilling the law of Christ. Because we're not allowing each other to bear the burdens that we carry together. Now, here, here's the most common objection that I hear to this. And I've heard it a lot, um, mainly from, from students doing student ministry, but I, I'm sure this is true of any of us. When you kind of find out that somebody is going through something, that they're bearing some kind of burden, whether that's, man, just spiritual or physical or financial or whatever that looks like, they're bearing some kind of burden. And then you, you do kind of find out about it and you hear about it and you're talking to them about it. And they just usually say something like this. Here's the objection. You know, I just didn't want anybody else to have to worry about me. To have to carry that burden. Right? That's my burden. I didn't want to bother them. You ever thought that? Be honest. You ever thought that? You ever had that? Right? Like, guys, that is not the way we do life together. And Paul's clear, right? Paul says in this passage too, like each one should carry his own load, right? He, he's very clear about that. He says, test yourself, test your own actions, take pride in yourself so that you can carry. He's, he's just kind of saying this, like, don't take advantage of each other. That's not what we're talking about here. If you don't actually need something, don't say that you need it. Don't, don't do things just to get attention. Don't ask for help that you don't really need. But if you do actually have a need, actually have a burden, let others in on it. Let people Let people get to know you. Let people get to know you. Guys, a church this size, it is simple. I used to do this in high school. It was was simple to walk into church and sit down and, and, and be anonymous in a church like this. And nobody really knows you. Nobody really knows what's going on. Nobody understands or sees you. 
And then we, when, then we get to think, well, nobody sees me. Nobody knows me. Nobody cares. But the reality is sometimes we just don't let people in. We're not in a growth group. We're not serving on a ministry team. We're maybe here once a month, once every six weeks, Easter and Christmas, something like that. And we're not consistently together. We're not doing life together. We're sitting in chairs together. This series ain't called Sit Together. It's called Life Together. I just thought of that. That was good. Um, man, I, I don't know. It, it, and as we've been talking about these things, just again, as, as a pastoral staff and, and preaching team, it's just, it has been our hearts and our burden that we want to, guys, we want y'all, we want us, we want all of us to really experience what Paul's talking about in Galatians, of experiencing the Holy Spirit really working in and amongst us. He says in Ephesians, there is one body and one spirit, and we're called to one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, right? We're one, we're united in the spirit. But yet, if we don't let each other in, then the Spirit can't do His proper work in us and amongst us. If you want to experience Jesus in all of His fullness by the Spirit that lives inside of you, then you have to be willing to be in and do life together with each other. This is how church should work. This is what it should look like. He says in verse 6, anyone who receives instruction, hang with me here. This is not about y'all just giving us money. It says, anyone who receives instruction in the Word must share all good things with his instructor. Now, um, it is true that we should give to the church, right? I give to the church and we should give to the church because we need to be able to do the ministry that we do. And it's a blessing to get to do that. And it's a blessing that we do that together. However, I actually see in this verse, because the way Paul words it, he says, anyone who receives instruction in the word must share in all good things. The actual word is the word koinonia. It's the word fellowship. It's that, that, that word share. It's, it's fellowship. It's like doing things together, doing life together, doing ministry together. He's not saying necessarily share stuff with those who teach you the word. He's saying share in life and share in ministry with them. All the good things that Jesus is doing in his kingdom and through the gospel message and the gospel ministry. Share that together. In other words, there are no professional Christians. It's not just the people who stand on stage and then everybody else. We're up here to help equip you and to help remind you and to, yes, spend our lives studying and reading so that we can teach better and so that we can shepherd, so that we can lead. But ultimately, y'all, we are the church and we are called to share in this ministry together. You know what the best part of ministry is? Uh, just honestly, like day to day ministry that I get to do and see the best stuff that I get to see in ministry is the ministry that I don't do. It's the ministry that they do with each other. That teenagers are just loving one another and serving each other and caring for each other and studying God's word together. That is the good stuff. That's the way it should be happening, right? And uh, like uh, so often, I just think in the church, we get this mindset like it's the preachers and then it's everybody else, just the lay people, just the normal people. And we're not called to do ministry. We're not called to disciple. We're not called to make a difference in this world. We're not called to share the gospel. We're not called to actually serve people. Yes, we are. He says share in all good things. Right? Do the ministry together. Fellowship in the gospel ministry in this world. And let's do that together. In the book of Acts, again, in chapter 2, man, we see this happening. And I know we pretend, and I don't want to paint this picture like the church in the New Testament was perfect because it wasn't. For a couple of chapters, it was, it was really good. And then things did kind of get messy, and, and it is messy. And that's why the New Testament's written but what we see in Acts chapter 2 is these Christians, again, who are this new body of believers. And it says that they are one in mind and they have glad and sincere hearts. And they share everything together, right? They just give of themselves. They give everything that they can give. And they just love each other and they look out for each other's needs. Is that the way the church is functioning here? Are we doing that life together? Are we serving each other? Are we looking out for each other? Or do we just kind of wear these blinders of like, you know what? It's not my problem. Whatever's going on in your life, whatever sin you might be struggling with, whatever burden you may be carrying, that's your issue. It's not my issue. Let's go to lunch. Right? That's not church. Church is when we go, okay, you know what? If you got something going on in life, that's my burden too. Let me bear that with you. Let me do ministry with you. Listen, if there are, when's the last time, just ask yourself, when's the last time you, you asked that single parent how they're doing? 
When's the last time you, you checked in on that person that, you know what, has just maybe been struggling with some, something going on in their life financially? When's the last time you provided for somebody who needed some, some food or needed a, a car or helped, so, helped that brother find a job who just got laid off? Adults, when's the last time you asked yourself, is there a young person here I can be discipling? When's the last time you started to have these thoughts about how can I not just be a consumer, but a contributor to the life of the church? To the body of believers, and I I know it might sound like I'm just being, like, getting, I'm not, I'm just saying, look, this is the way the church is meant to look, and it's beautiful when it looks that way. Man, I even see parents sometimes that just put the blinders on with their own kids. It's not my job to disciple them, that's Kurt's job. No, it's not. It is, but it's yours first, right? Right? We have got to stop making everything everybody else's job and start seeing ourselves as a body of Christ that does life together. And it starts with me and it starts with you just going, I'll do it. I'll serve. I'll help. I'll disciple. I'll give. I'll provide. That's how the Spirit works in us and through us. And then Paul ends this up with this last little paragraph. He says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. Listen, the one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Do you want to reap the benefits of walking in the Spirit? Do you want to do that? I'm really asking. Do you want to do that? Do you want to reap what the Spirit would have, the harvest that He would give us in our lives and through our lives and among one another. If we actually want to do that, then this is what we must do. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, listen, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Very simple. If you have an opportunity to do good, if you have an opportunity to restore a brother or sister who is struggling in sin, if you have an opportunity to bear the burdens of someone who is struggling in some way, if you have the opportunity to do good, do good. And in that way, you will reap the harvest that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, oh my goodness, I just think we are missing the Spirit sometimes. We're missing what he's doing because we're not listening to this. It's simple. Do the good that you have the opportunity to do when you have the opportunity. So here's an opportunity. You just told me you wanted to reap the benefits. You wanted to see the harvest that the Spirit is going to work in and amongst us. So here's an opportunity. We're going to take a few minutes here. We did this first service and it was beautiful. And we're going to do this now. And Therese is just going to play a little bit for us and just kind of allow us just to, to, to think and, and kind of just create this space and this atmosphere. And here's what I want to offer to you. Do you have a burden? Do you have a sin that you just feel stuck in? Do you have a burden that's just been weighing you down? Do you have something that you're just struggling with in life? Guys, it could be physical, it could just be spiritual or emotional. Do you actually have a need? If you do, here's your opportunity to let us in on it. I'm not saying you got to hop up here and confess your sins. What I'm saying is, here's an opportunity to ask for prayer. And if maybe you're not on that, but maybe you're on the other side of this coin, here's an opportunity to do good. Here's an opportunity to pray for somebody else. So, for these next, like, 10 minutes. We're just going to have some music playing. And I am inviting you. I'm asking you. If you have something that you need. If you have some burden that you're carrying. If you have something that you're stuck in. If you have something that you need prayer for. Just come right here. Look, I'm hanging out here. Trey's right here. Look, we got other pastors or elders in the room. If they just want to come down. Listen, if somebody comes down who's not being prayed for, you stand up and you come and pray over this person. I want you to know what it feels like when the Spirit works amongst us 
to be the church that God has called us to be. And it just simply starts with us looking at each other and saying, hey, I need something. Or us looking at each other and saying, hey, I'll provide for you. I'll give to you. I'll help you. I'll serve you. I'll pray for you. What can I do? How can I pray? How can I? I want you to know that. And I want us to experience that. I don't just want you to have heard some words this morning. I want you to see the Spirit work. So we're giving you an opportunity. As you have opportunity to do good, do it, and you will reap the harvest that the Spirit would produce in and amongst us. So listen, I'm done talking. (laughs) If you want to come up, you can come right here and pray. I will pray over you. Trey will pray over you. A brother or sister, somebody else will stand up, and they will come down, and they will pray over you. If you just want to sit in your seat, and you just want to raise your hand because you don't want to come down, just put a hand up, and somebody around you, if you see somebody raise their hand, just pray for that brother. Pray for that sister. Put a hand on a shoulder if you want to, if they're okay with that. Just pray. We're going to pray for each other, and if you do nothing else this morning, you sit right there, and you just pray, and you ask the Spirit to move. Ask the Spirit to work. And then maybe in a little bit as we're eating lunch, we can just ask each other, hey, how can I serve you? How can I help you? All right? Let's pray. If you need something, come down. If you want to pray for somebody else, come down. just um, we just thank you that you hear our prayers and a, a million whispers going on in this room right now and just all the prayers that are said out loud the prayers that are in our hearts and our minds God you hear them we talked last week about how you are the God that sees you are the God that hears you know every burden you know every sin you know every fear every doubt every insecurity Every bad decision, God, you know. Help us, God, strengthen us by your spirit to allow each other the blessedness and the grace of joining in our lives together. Not trying to do life by ourselves. Life is so much harder by ourselves. So God, let us be faithful to your word and listen to what it says and walk in step with your spirit to love one another this way and to continue to do that. God, you're so good. Thank you so much for all that you are and all that you do. I pray that um, even still that uh, these prayers would continue and conversations would, would be sparked throughout this day and that we would meet each other's needs however we can. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Hey, listen, thank you so much uh, for that time, really. Um, I Honestly, I want to do stuff like this more. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually... Um, I'm just hopeful for what God's doing in our midst and just the way that he's allowing us as a church to continue to follow his leading and his word and his spirit. Um, So look, we're going to be a praying church. Is that okay with y'all? We're going to be a praying church and we're going to meet each other's needs. So, so listen, if you have opportunity to do good, do good to each other. Ask somebody how they're doing. Actually listen to the answer. And then meet a need if and however you can, okay? And if there's some kind of need that, you know, you want to talk to me or one of the other pastors about, please just let us know, all right? We want to, want to meet needs. All right, a couple quick things about the barbecue. Um, free barbecue today. If you weren't planning on staying, just stay. Eat some barbecue with us. Um, we're going to do it kind of on the back parking lot. So if y'all would just kind of leave, if your cars are like over here, just leave them over here. You can go get your kids, obviously. Um, go get them if you need to get them. And then just walk down that walking path right there um, and kind of go towards that back parking lot. Free barbecue, can't beat that, right? Jason Bigham smoked some barbecue for us. The Bigham family's right here. So awesome, super cool. All right, hey guys, love y'all. Y'all have a great Sunday and we'll see y'all at the picnic, all right?